it's Tanya and yeah I've been kind of absent on my channel lately and it's not because I'm not doing stuff I do every Friday have my hip kit club design team layout but I've kind of been focusing more on <laughs> my watercolors and playing with that and not making videos because I don't feel confident doing that but I just wanted to show you what I've been up to just you know to I'll touch base with you again and I know most of my viewers are scrapbookers but maybe some of you are dabbling like I am into the art journaling and stuff and maybe you'll be inspired by this I'm not sure otherwise you can just listen to me waffle for a bit this is a very rudimentary homemade sketchbook what I did is I watched a couple of tutorials and I will link some of them below because they are they're really good and they show you what to do and why I say it's rudimentary is because um, the papers <laughs> sometimes they just fall out so it's not it's it's not a professionally made one it does lie flat I will give it that what I used is this this glue it is bookbinding glue which I bought from a local shop and essentially what you do is you get your papers and you make sure that they are all lined up you know oh what's the word you you, you sort of tap them and they they're all evenly evenly lined up and then you clamp it between two clamps which I got hubby's ginormous clamps and he helped me do it so you clamp it together you put several layers of the glue you, you know you put a layer on you wait for it to dry you put another one on I put several on and I also tried to add in some mesh because essentially what you're trying to do is get the glue to stick to the paper but because the paper's not quite even it's it's not you know it's not that great sometimes it doesn't they don't all get to stick as I am witnessing with some of my papers falling out and I have where are we oh, I've lost it now yeah I have put tape down on some of them in fact all of them to make sure they don't fall out but it's something that I had so much fun making and I've put all sorts of papers in here mainly watercolor paper and what I would if you do this you can just take watercolor pads you get um, let me show you I have quite a few. I do this. <laughs> I go ballistic and buy a whole bunch of stuff. I'm planning on making another one. But uh, yeah, there's some of this Fabriano paper in there. And it's beautiful paper. And I have... Um, I think I have some of that in there. And this one... Whoops. This De La Rowney one, I mean, look how fat that pad is. It's just fantastic. So I have a lot of this in. And this is really nice paper, watercolour paper. So yeah, that's what I did. I took a whole bunch of different watercolour papers, put them in the press, and clamped it and put the glue on. And now I've been playing with it. And I wanted to show you. Oh, and then I took scrapbooking paper and covered it because this is just the backing of the paper pads. And I did put contact paper over it, so that's why it looks all shiny. And I put a spine of washi tape. I had some thick washi tape and I did that. So yeah, I was quite chuffed with it. The more I use it, the more it's starting to come apart, sadly. You can see there, by if you see, it's coming apart from the spine. So yeah, it's, <laughs> it's not perfect at all. But what it has done for me, and I don't know why, psychologically it's allowed me to just paint without fear. I don't know, for some reason if I buy a sketchbook, I feel like I've got to fill it with perfect paintings. And when I get one that isn't perfect, I get very despondent and I think, oh no, and then I tear the page out or, or I give up. Whereas for some reason, I think because I use paper pads, which, you know, almost have a... Not a transitory nature but you feel more free to use a single sheet of paper you know and mess it up than you do if it's a, a book which you're going to have on your shelf or something I'm not sure I've done a brief thinking about it I haven't psychoanalyzed myself too much over this but I think it has a lot to do with I don't know maybe because it's a homemade one I think I can just go wild in it and and not fear 
this page is probably falling out, you know, and not fear that I'm gonna, you know, it's gonna look horrible. So yeah, so this was my first page and I was super proud of this. I, what I'm doing is I'm swatching my, my paints and my pens and things in a, in a fun way. And yeah, this is, this is my curated watercolor set. Uh, it came, Arit very kindly sent it to me, oh golly, ages back. And she sent it with some colors in and I've added colors to it. These are Prima and this is homemade. So I've got some, I've, I've got some beautiful colors in there. I love this palette so much. So yeah, I swatched it using a stamp set, which I actually have. Yeah, I've got everything close to hand. Here we go. It's a Stamping Bella stamp set. It's super cute. She has, it's Daniel Donaldson. She does these really nifty ones where it's all very painty and swatchy and stuff. And this little guy, you'll see he's in here somewhere. I use him often on these pages. So yeah, and I love this idea. I've been watching a lot of videos where people do sketching and watercoloring and they you know, make notes and things, and I just love the idea of it. So that was my first attempt, and I was very pleased with myself. Then I decided to swatch all my Distress Oxides that I have, and they really stamp beautifully. I was, I was really very pleased with, you know, how that came out, and such pretty colors. Ah, Cracked Pistachio is one of my favorites. And this one, when you put water on it, look at how it does that oxidizing. I'm not sure if you can see it, but you've got really interesting textures going on there. So yes, there was that one. And then this is a tutorial that I followed. It's Let's Make Art. They have a subscription box. I got onto this by Jen Scow actually. I was following one of her videos and she was showing all these watercolor things that she was doing and I was like, oh, those are looking so pretty. And they they're really generous because the tutorials are freely available on YouTube and they give the outlines. If there's an outline like this cat, they give you the template for it. So yeah, I uh, surprised myself a little bit with that one. This one as well is a bit of a disaster. These are my gelatos. I don't have a huge collection of gelatos and I was doing the swatching and then I thought, oh, okay, well, it doesn't look very good. So I tried to make it into an ice cream cone. Yeah, it didn't work so well, but I do like my shading. <laughs> kind of getting the shading going there. And then, oh, I came up with this idea myself and I thought it was really quite cute. I don't know why I've got my watercolors there. I basically wanted to swatch, and these are all Jane Davenport's um, aqua, aqua pestles, these ones. Um, let me see if I can find one. Nope. Not that one. Ah, here we go. Here's one. Jane Danvin Aqua Pastels. So I wanted to see what the colour was like in its, you know, concentrated form and then to make it go out so you can see how nice and light it goes. And these were actually happy... This was a happy accident. If you can see there, it kind of looks like it spilled out of the test tube onto there. So I was very pleased with that, actually. And I did... I even did... Ugh, look at the growth here, people. I mean... I did a little thumbnail idea of what I wanted to do. Ah, uh, lots and lots of YouTube videos <laughs> and getting the ideas. So yeah, I I like how that one came out. And as you can see, I've got it down here because otherwise this book is just going to fall apart. Ah, and there I decided to just, this was easy, I just put it down and traced around it and I still managed to mess up. I got my divisions wrong there. But yeah, these are these are super cute. The little pastel watercolors, they're not that expensive. They're on Amazon. And if I remember, I will put uh, links below to a lot of these if you can find them on Amazon. They are affiliate links and really, I'm very new to this whole affiliate thing. So it's going really slowly, <laughs> but that's fine. Uh, there's not, that's not the reason why I'm doing these. Uh, these, this is a stamp set I have, and these are the Koi, the little Koi neon colors. It's a really cute little set. And yeah, like my little birdie. So yes, we did, we swatched those. This, this was a bit of a very messy rainbow. And yeah, it, it 
I'm not so sure what I think about it and especially as in some of them I forgot there was green in a rainbow so there's no green in the rainbows but yes that's my Elton New my Elton New set I should really write something here it looks very blank there so that was that one this again was an idea I came up with in my mind well where else do you come up with your ideas Tanya and don't dislike the execution actually again this is the Elton New paints I wanted this idea of you know two liquids forming the rainbow and that's what I did with lots of splatters <laughs> and yeah this I got a stamp set I wanted to try out a very cheap one and these are Tim Holtz distress crayons again I don't have well you can see how many colors I have I don't use them very often and I think I should use them more because they're really quite pretty this was just me doing paint stripes decided to do paint stripes should do something with it but uh, but yeah so nice colors and what else have we got oh this okay I have to show you this oh I found it in a Chinese store they were super super cheap they are not the best quality stamps but I don't care because this this is just, I'm an 80s, I grew up in the 80s. I look at this and I am taken back to so many wonderful memories growing up. My Walkman, my roller skates, did not have one of those. A stiffy disc, a VHS, I mean, come on, the Rubik's Cube, even the skateboard. I used to skateboard as a kid. And the computer, I mean, if you are around about my age you will look at this and just think oh yeah life back then I just it just <sighs> so many memories this was a bit of a disaster this again was that little this it is in here oh the noise the noise see that little little stamp and I was going to try and do a a swatching but I, I don't like how it came out this is in fact this big boy watercolor set which is a recent purchase of mine yes I've been going a little bit uh, a little bit crazy I know but it makes me happy <laughs> so there we go they're really pretty colors actually so I'll be using those as well they really are nice bright colors uh, but yeah it's a bit of a disaster I don't like it so and oh yes almost embarrassed to show this but uh, I decided to we went out to lunch hubby and I and this is a King Protea it's uh, our national flower in South Africa and I thought why not why not go from being really you know rud you, rudimentary seems to be the word of the day doing very simple things to why not do a really complicated thing which is so out of your comfort zone you know and yeah it's not brilliant at all but I'm pretty chuffed that I did it and yes I did if you you probably can see I traced around this is just a, a printout of the photograph I took I traced around with pencil so then I got my layer what is it um, I had the word earlier outline there we go so I had the outline which is why it looks like a mirror image and and then I tried to do the watercolor painting yeah for for a for a newbie it, I'm not I'm not displeased with myself I mean yeah leaps and bounds people leaps and bounds and then I kind of yeah it's not that happy with the spread I was swatching my mermaid markers and trying to do the colors it makes a beautiful orange the starfish and and the pirate's gold makes a gorgeous orange and I love the purple but the, these colors I really don't like at all not into the mustard yellows then I thought maybe I should try with some of her newer colors and I do I do like I do like that better I prefer this color range that I got going with those three I like the brighter colors I don't I don't like the what I call almost like dirty looking colors not that keen on them so yeah not that keen on this page but it's I mean this is what you do with swatching don't you yes you do and yeah again I got this little set 
the neons and thought I would do that um, that colour swatching where you swatch all the colours together to see what it makes and yes I did goof up because there should have actually been a space for the yellow one but uh, I ended up doing it down the middle here <laughs> because this thing confuses my brain somewhat I, 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 I haven't quite got it right but again I was using that little stamp but I did I did find some of the neutrals that it made very interesting colours I, I, Having said I like bright colours, I think some of these colours that came out are really pretty. So, yeah, wasn't uh, was pleasantly surprised there. And my shadowing is just awful. And then I thought, you know, having discovered that these colours make interesting blends, I thought I'd try them with my normal watercolours. And so I got some very interesting neutrals, not that I like much on this page, I must admit. This is actually a Prima beautiful colour. Love this colour. But yeah, I was I was experimenting and I think that's all I've done so far. So yes, I'm you know, I really hope you enjoyed this video. I I'm always very nervous showing this kind of thing because I always feel like I'm such a noob that uh, and there's so many very, very talented people out there. But I did want to show it because it does it does show a sense of growth and it shows that I am practicing and trying and I am getting results that I am not, love this page, not unimpressed with. So yes, there we go. That is what I have been up to lately and I'm not sure when this is going to go up but I do still do my scrapbooking videos on a Friday and yeah, I'm still around. So, you know, don't forget about me. <laughs> Hope you have a fantastic day and we will hopefully chat again soon. Bye bye.